Donald Trump might as well just keep the plane running this week, bouncing back and forth across the United States like a ping pong ball from court to campaign, back to court to campaign again. It's enough to make a person dizzy. Today, having crossed off the legal portion of his frantic itinerary in the E. Jean Carroll case, Trump is once again switching hats from that of defendant to that of Iowa caucus winning candidate. The disgraced ex-president is in New Hampshire as we speak for an event at the top of the hour. Meanwhile, two of his remaining competitors are both seeking to frame themselves as the viable alternative to Trump. And while Ron DeSantis was the runner up in Iowa, it's Nikki Haley's campaign that's claiming the momentum. Perhaps Trump's team sees it the same way because new reporting today from NBC indicates his campaign is now setting its sights on Nikki Haley, vowing to go after her reputation and image with the New Hampshire primary next week. Joining us now is NBC News correspondent Ali Vitale out in New Hampshire following the Haley campaign, plus editor-at-large for the Bulwark, Charlie Sykes, and with me at the table is the Democratic strategist and director of the public policy program at Hunter College, Basil Smichael. Welcome to all three of you. Thank you for being with us. Ali V, let's start with you um, uh, out in New Hampshire, uh, uh, symbolizing the uh, cold that it is. Uh, talk to me about Nikki Haley. She didn't come in second, but it was awful close. Um, she wanted the momentum going into New Hampshire, where things polling indicates she's closer to Trump than she obviously was in, in Iowa. Yeah, awful close doesn't get you second or first in the case of Ron DeSantis, but it does get you enough momentum to get into New Hampshire. And for Nikki Haley, it gives her enough to try to turn the page and say that this is a binary race between her and the former president. That's the new narrative that she's trying to present here on the ground. We're seeing it in the advertisements that she's running on TV, but we're also seeing it in the way that she struck a different tone on the former president last night. During her speech in Iowa, she kept repeating the phrase Trump and Biden or Biden and Trump, lumping them together in their age, in the fact that they are part of the same past generation of leadership. It really does dovetail nicely with the message that she's had the entire time which is that she is the new generational representation of the Republican Party. Of course, you look at the results from last night and it becomes sort of clear that at least in Iowa, they don't want a new representation, at least not right now. Even someone like Ron DeSantis said that he met voters who said they loved him and they'd vote for him. But next election cycle, it's really difficult. And we've seen this the whole time to run as a Trump light when really Trump is in the race and voters can have exactly the person that they've wanted the entire time. I think, though, last night was instructive, if not for the ways that this primary race could change, Ali, but for the ways that the party has kind of confirmed the suspicions that we've had this entire primary, not just that Trump is the heir apparent to the throne that he was the last to sit in, but also the fact that they don't care about any of the things that should, in theory, be political liabilities for him. The idea that he's bouncing between campaign trail to courtroom and back again in any other election cycle, I think that would seem unfathomable. But in this one, his rivals are unwilling to say the quiet part out loud, which is that it's still bad to be indicted. It's definitely bad to have 91 criminal indictments against you and to have to be battling on four different legal fronts to conserve yourself so that you don't end up on the ballot as an actual convicted criminal. Nevertheless, Trump has been able to convince voters, at least in Iowa, the majority of them said that he's still qualified to be president, even if he's convicted in any one of these cases. I think that's a stunning reminder of the ways that he's bent this party to his will and sort of given them the, the space to accept all of the things that should be political liabilities, but somehow are not. I think that for someone like Nikki Haley, until she starts going at him directly on something like that, the electorate is not going to change. But the thing that's different about New Hampshire is that you're not just gunning for Republicans here. Instead, you're also looking at independents and maybe even some Democrats who could potentially play in this primary pool, at least for a little while. And that's the thing that could really shake up the race in terms of Haley being able to place second or potentially even challenge Trump for first. Uh, Charlie, uh, one of the things Donald Trump has said he's going to do now is he's going to go after Haley. He said over the weekend, you're going to find out a lot about Haley in the next short period of time. She was an elected governor. Uh, she is Senate confirmed uh, because she was the U.S. Uh, ambassador to the United Nations. She's been in public life for a long time. Um, is this just Trump being Trump uh, or, or does Nikki Haley have something to worry about that, that he's really setting his sights on her? Well, well, Trump is always Trump, um, <laughs> and uh, this is this is not a surprise. He is going to attack. He's going to vilify. Uh, he will throw every every bit of mud up against against the wall. Um, and um, you know, look, um, 
there are two narratives that come out of Iowa, and, and they're both true. One is that this is Donald Trump's party. It has been completely magified. We're 49 days until Super Tuesday. It is uh, very difficult to imagine him not getting the nomination. So he is dominant. But the other, um, the other takeaway, though, is that he's also incredibly vulnerable for some of the reasons that uh, that Ali just mentioned here. Um, because, you know, when you when you look at the numbers, first of all, it was a very, very small turnout. You have 25 percent of the Iowa caucus goers who say that they will not vote for Donald Trump in the general election. You have more than 30 percent who say that they believe that criminal convictions are, in fact, uh, disqualifying for him. And so, you know, yes, he, he has played to his MAGA loyal base by playing the victim card. But in a very short period of time, he's going to turn to a general electorate, which I think may have a very different reaction to bouncing back and forth between the campaign trail and criminal and civil trials. Uh, how many people um, in his base or swing voters, uh, more likely, um, actually know about the E. Jean Carroll case? Know that he, when he shows up at a at a, at a courthouse, um, that he is being that he has been found liable for sexual assault. So the things that worked for him in MAGA world to nail down this nomination. I think you are seeing the potential weakness going into a general election, because I'm trying to imagine any female voters in the suburbs of Pennsylvania looking at his behavior in the E. Jean Carroll case and saying, yeah, I didn't vote for him in 2020, but now he's my guy. Yeah. So I, I think you have the, again, two things, dominant in the Republican Party, but increasingly vulnerable as a general election candidate. Uh, Basil, there are some complexities with Nikki Haley now uh, being ascendant. One of them is when she was asked about a, a very simple question about the uh, history of the Civil War as the governor of South Carolina. One would know that. I think you have to read that. But but she was trying to not offend that base that she's going to try and go for if something were to happen to Donald Trump. More interestingly, though, the NBC polling this weekend indicated that of the people who support her as, a, as their first choice, their second choice is not Donald Trump or Ron DeSantis. It's Joe Biden. Right. Um, so she's really got this strange road that she has to walk right now because she knows she's got to lock on potentially Republican moderates and maybe even some Democrats in the election. Well, that's why Charlie's point is so important about um, the, the kind of general election candidate that Donald Trump would be. Nikki Haley is a far better general election candidate. Look, Years ago, when she presided over the taking down of the uh, Confederate flag in the capital of South Carolina, you could say whatever the political motive was, wow, okay, I could see that they've got, there could be an appeal there to more moderate Republicans and such. Uh, but since then, she's really taken on the Trump mm. MAGA sort of language. And when you also essentially defend Donald Trump, through all of these legal matters, um, then you're you're essentially not creating the difference that voters need to see between you and that guy, right? There is no difference there. There's there's no differentiation, and so if you're going to get Trump light, why not just vote for Trump? Um, and so that's one of the challenges I think both Haley and DeSantis have had. Now going forward. She can make the case to independents in New Hampshire that she's a better elect, uh, general election candidate, maybe even some Democrats. The problem is when she gets to South Carolina, mm -hmm. you've got far more evangelicals in South Carolina, far more conservatives. Those are the voters that really supported Donald Trump in Iowa. If you look at some of those exit and entrance polls, uh, Trump's voters are more enthusiastic about him, and they say with greater frequency that he shares their values. You don't get that with a Nikki Haley. Right. So the question is, she may be able to make the argument she's a better general election candidate, but will she ever get that opportunity? Right. And she has said in, the, in deciding whether or not she's going to compete, uh, take part in the next debate, she said not if it's uh, not Donald oh, Trump, Trump, because right. she, she says the next debate she's going to have is either going to be with Trump or with Biden. Alex